Hi. Hi. You know, let me just get this out of the way right now. It's no secret I've had a small bout with mental illness. <laughs> but I'm happy now. I'm happy, happy, happy. I hope I stay this happy, you know, because sometimes, I don't know, I get so gloomy. So gloomy, gloomy, gloomy. I'm afraid, I don't know, I might accidentally have to hurt someone. <laughs> My therapist, Dr. Luther, said, actually, he said it this morning while we were having sex, that he gets, he gets violent thoughts like that, too. And I'm working on these feelings at the Center for Affordable Psychotherapy, so I'm fine. I still get scared sometimes, though. Like scared someone out there thinks I'm someone else. And that someone else has been a really bad girl. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to be arrested for some crime I didn't commit, or, or maybe commit a crime in my sleep, or be framed for some terribly unpleasant crime, like, gosh, I don't know, stabbing my entire family to death over Thanksgiving dinner because they never fucking listen to me. <laughs> and no one will believe I didn't do it. And I'll have to spend the rest of my life in a maximum security prison being raped by bull dykes named Paula. <laughs> who wear wranglers and oversized watches. Who have their way with me all day long, far into the night. Taking turns with me, passing me from cell to cell. Through the bars. <laughs> holding me above their bi-level haircut heads. Chanting my name like... I'm some sort of grand prize or something. <laughs> and the whole time, William and Roderick, the big black prison guards, just watch <laughs> and chortle. And sometimes I have to have coitus with them, too. They make me. <laughs> Other times, I don't worry about anything at all. I feel calm. And I'm learning to forgive myself for things, too, like stalking all those guys. <laughs> so I stalked a few guys. Big deal. I mean, God, I won't be ignored. <laughs> Besides, it's their own fault. I told them on the first date, you know, while we were having sex, look, if we get things started and they don't work out, I have a really hard time letting go. <laughs> and remember, sure, you could run. But you can't hide. <laughs> Where are you going to hide? <laughs> huh? Big shot? <laughs> I'm going to find you. <laughs> I am. You stuck it in me. That's a nonverbal promise. <laughs> I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> I will. I don't know. I guess my parents didn't pay enough attention to my needs growing up. My mother refused to cook on weekends. She'd say, Your father and I are going into the city. You, your brother, and your sisters can have tuna on a bagel. Go. Do. <laughs> They just didn't pay attention to me. See, I was a bedwetter. I wet my bed. My wet bed was covered with wet sheets. I was a peer in the better. <laughs> my parents knew this, but they sent me away to camp for the entire summer. They said my bed needed a few months to dry out. <laughs> to go piss log someone else's mattresses for a while. I learned how to lick the problem, though. I just didn't sleep for two months. <laughs> do you know what 60 days sleep deprivation can do to a 12-year-old girl? Do you? <laughs> so I'm a skinny. It's tough being a skinny. I used to wear three pairs of jeans on top of each other to try and help fill me out. It didn't work. It just made me the skinny kid who couldn't bend at the knees. 